It's Chris Barbick, I'm the founder and head of schools of Yes Prep Public Schools and we are here in Houston, Texas. I founded Yes Prep 10 years ago, uh, 1998, and uh, prior to that I was a teacher. I, I got into education to Teach for America um, and was teaching here in Houston on the east side of town for six years. And the reason I started Yes Prep was uh, I taught sixth grade and I saw my kids come back to me uh, who went off to the local middle school after I left my, left my classroom. and. Uh, you know, the, the stories I heard just got me really frustrated about um, the quality of education that they were receiving, um, the expectations that the teachers that they had at the school had for them and what they thought was possible. Um, well, you know, in a lot of cases, the kids were, weren't even being assigned homework. Um, I'd ask them, why, you know, why aren't you being assigned homework? Well, they, you know, they won't let us take the books home, um, things like that. Um, and, uh, and these were kids who, when they were in my classroom for that one year, were doing great um, and, and had goals and aspirations. And you know, college was something that, you know, even though they would, they would have been the first ones in their family to go, was something that they um, were committed to trying to do. And what I realized was that if all I could do is, is if all I could do as a teacher is ensure they had one good year, that there wasn't any, any guarantee that after that year they spent with me in my classroom, that there was gonna be anyone for the next seven years of their education that was gonna hold them to the same expectations and that was gonna push them to try and you know, get ready to go to college. And so I felt like um, you know, I had a responsibility to try and set up an environment where uh, those expectations um, and support was, was provided beyond just one year. So. This is an idea that you put on paper, um, and that was really the charter that we wrote. And then once the state approved the charter, then that's really, the rest of it's kind of, you're on your own. So we, we went out, we borrowed a million dollars to buy the buildings. Um, we borrowed them at 12.5% interest, which was, you know, n not, a, uh, not a great interest rate. Um, but we didn't have any collateral. I mean, I was 28, I owned a Honda Civic, um, so there wasn't... Uh, you know, it wasn't really the, the. Let's put it this way: the traditional financing alternatives weren't really open, open to us. Um, and so we uh, we borrowed the money, we bought the buildings. Um, what's funny is our charter was approved in March of 1998, and the school opened up in September. So between March and September, we literally borrowed a million bucks, bought the buildings, hired the teachers, and there were 16 of them. Recruited you know 300 students. Um, you know, got the busings figured out, trans, you know, food service figured out, textbooks, I mean, everything in six to seven months. You know, literally got the school started on credit cards and on the million dollar loan that we got. And we purchased 11 modular buildings uh, and we set them up in the middle of a parking lot um, over on the east side of town. Um, and in our second year, we were the top performing high school in the state of Texas. What we've proven is that if you, if, you prov if you create the right expectations for kids and you, um, you get a group of adults who believe that kids can do that, um, and then you provide the support and the encouragement in the right environment that uh, that any kid, regardless of you know where they live, the zip code, ethnicity, um, you know socioeconomic status, every kid can can be prepared to go to college and be successful. For, for folks that were my same age, in my same age group, they thought it was pretty cool, um, and they thought it was kind of crazy. Um, older people who we talked to for you know, support and funding and whatnot. Um, it was kind of like that's really cute. You know, look look at the young look at the young kids out trying to do something good for the world. Um, and I think that sort of ah oh, isn't that cute thing um, played out for a while. I mean, it wasn't until we started opening up more campuses and really proving that look this isn't a fluke. You know, we can do this in four or five different places in four or five different communities. You know, at at a decent sized scale. Um, that we've gone from sort of oh isn't that cute to you know this this is a serious this is a serious um, possibility in how we can reform education in Houston. I think what it boils down to is that there was something that I saw happening, and you know I felt like there was no way I could walk away and not try and do something about it. I knew we could what was being done for the kids in the neighborhood that something it could be something better. And it, and it wouldn't take like some super Herculean person to do it, like that I, you know, I could do it. Like I, and you know, for whatever reason, I just had this moment of clarity where I knew exactly what needed to happen. Um, and, and really the challenge was, how do you convince a, another, you know, a group of people to follow you? And, um, and what was amazing is that it wasn't as nearly as hard as I thought it was gonna be. That other people saw the exact same thing um, and other people, got that it needed to happen. 
when we went out and recruited the students to come to the school, you know, the parents would ask, well, where is the school? You know, we want to drive by and see the school. And the school was a, was a parking lot. There wasn't, there wasn't any, there wasn't any building there. Um, and you know, we, you'd try and explain to the families, well, you know, we've ordered the buildings, they're going to get delivered, and you know, these were families. You know, a lot of them didn't speak English, and I mean, this whole, I mean, the whole concept of a charter school that they didn't really understand. Um, and they still, they still, believe, you know, they still sent their kids. And I think what it, what it was a testament to was two things. One, just how much these parents wanted to make sure their kids were going to a good school. Um, and how desperate they were to f make sure they had a good school for their kids. Um, and, and knowing that the school that they were sending their kids to was never going to get them there. Um, you know, they were willing to take just a huge, huge, huge risk. I think it was both belief and, and desperation knowing that this was really the only shot they had for their kids to, to be on a track to go to college. You know, for a lot of those families, I mean, that's, that is why they came to this country. It was for opportunities and, you know, they were willing to take a risk um, if it meant that uh, their kids had a legitimate pathway to, to, to a better life. Which is we, we hope to grow to 10,000 students here in Houston. So right now, in our current five schools, when we, when we start a school, we start with one grade, which is six, and we add a grade each year up until 12. Um, the school that we're at now is the only one of the five that has all the grades six through 12. Um, and so when the other four campuses grow out, we'll be at 4,000 kids. And then what we'd like to do is open eight more campuses here in Houston and get to 10,000. And when we do that, um, we'll triple the number of kids that live in low-income neighborhoods in Houston who finish a four-year college. Um, and we feel like by doing that, you know, we'll be in enough places in the city that you start to take away the excuses that the public schools can make about the kids that we serve. Um, and so I think there's, there's kind of, you know, there's sort of two parts to our theory for change. One is if we can directly serve 10,000 kids in 13 communities, that that's going to, you know, it's going to triple the number of low-income kids who go to college, which is huge. Um, but the ripple effect that that's going to have on the school district and our ability to, to really prove what's possible um, will hopefully drive them to get better and that even kids that don't attend, yes, um, will still get a, a better education as a result of us being. We have eight that have graduated. Um, 100% of them have all been accepted to a four-year school, um, and 85% are have either graduated from college or are still enrolled. Um, and so, if you look at the national average for the kids that we're serving here, it's, um, it's about 15 to 20% finish a four-year college. Um, and a sixth grader in Houston, if you follow a sixth grader through to college completion, 7% of the sixth graders in, in Houston finish a four-year college. And we have a wait list of 3,000 kids, I and mean, we have more. We have more kids on our wait list than we are serving at the schools right now, um, which leads me to believe that, you know, it, t 13 schools may not be enough. I mean, if there's still kids on a wait list, we're going to keep opening campuses until there's not. It's, you know, it's been hard, um, but it's been fun. Um, you know, there's definitely, uh, you know, there's, there's, I definitely understand and know, and don't question why you know I get out of bed every morning to come to work, um, and I think that uh, you know I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by just a ton of great people. Um, and I think anytime you're you know you're you feel like you're a highly valued member of a, like a high performing team that's doing something noble, um, you know, how can you not feel like you're pretty lucky? So.